Hello and welcome. Uh, I can see a few people coming into the webinar. So welcome aboard. Uh, good to see that you're early and on time. Uh, we're just going to be waiting for a couple minutes until we have a few people in here and then we can kick off proceedings. Uh, it's great to see so many people coming in early while we're waiting. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit from all of you in the um, in the chat side of the screen. So at the bottom, you'll see a chat. Uh, let us know where you're tuning in from um, and how long you've been using Matterport or if you're brand new, please let us know um, and potentially any industries that you do work in or specialize in. Um, to help, I'm uh, Stephen tuning in from Melbourne. Been working with Matterport for almost eight years, um, almost every industry. Uh, but yeah, please throw it in the chat. Love to hear from you. See where you're calling in from or tuning in from. To get a little bit more information from your Yeah, we have a couple from, one from Seattle, six and a half years. Kathy, legacy, well done. Perth, brand new, still trying to get to the business. Fantastic, Anton, welcome aboard. New Zealand property, um, property photography. Dean Shorley, welcome back. New Jersey, we've got some American attendees, which is great to see. Must be quite late in the evening if my maths is correct close to 10 p.m 9 p.m depending on what side of the country you're on um so welcome aboard and thank you for joining us so late gold coast kingsley welcome aboard hope to see more from you as a new attendee argentina might be our first ever argentinian guest welcome aboard sebastian good to see you and japan nigel welcome sam noakes um, one of our first clients here in australia from jealous craig good to see you on board i know you were trying to get up to um arak recently I assume you're in the same boat as us, which got stuck locked down in Melbourne. Um, but hopefully this can make up for a little part of it um, in any case. Well, welcome aboard everyone. As you can see in the chat, um, I'll just repeat myself because there's a few um, new participants that have joined. Please let us know where you're calling in from um, and also how long you've been with Matterport or if you're brand new to the space as well. Um, and uh, what industries you specialize in, if any at all. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. It helps us kind of curate the next webinars and the different parts of this series moving forward. Um, and it's also just so great to have um, an idea of where everyone's tuning in from um, with such a global audience that we've got going on today. Um, it's just clicked over 12, so I'm going to kick into gear uh, and start this webinar off. There's a few housekeeping rules I'd like to start with really quickly. Um, we do, and I'm sure you're all probably sick of Zoom and being told how to use Zoom, but just in case um, you're not, there is a Q&A function down at the bottom. Uh, we'll be answering as many questions as we possibly can at the end of the session. We'll have plenty of time. So if anything pops up um, during the next uh, 45 minutes or hour, please feel free to write your comments into the Q&A um, and we'll be endeavoring to answer as many as possible um, as we go through the process. Uh, secondly, this webinar will be recorded or is being recorded, I hope, yes it is, um, and we'll be sending out a live recording of this um, in about 24, 48 hours once we process it and get it up and running. And so if you um, want to reshare it with your, um, your group, your employees, wherever it may be, or just um, re-listen to some of the insights that have been provided, we'll be sending that out pretty shortly. And the last part as well, I'm hoping one of our moderators will um, send up the links to the Facebook groups, uh, whether you're new or existing, there's some amazing resources out there um, and to become part of the community within Matterport in general. Uh, so firstly, I would suggest uh, joining the MOOG, so the Matterport official user group on Facebook. Uh, there's some really good insights and conversations happening there. Also the captured community group. So that's more primarily based here in Australia and coming from us um, as a community builder with both our platform and the Matterport side of things as well. And the last one is Scan, which was our, in uh, our initial company that was the scanning company, but now is the, also the reseller for the Matterport hardware here in Australia and New Zealand. Um, I can see a lot more people coming in, which is great. Um, so welcome aboard, we'll kick it into gear. Um, and to begin, I'd just like to start with a welcome to country. So let's begin uh, by acknowledging the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, who are the traditional owners and custodians um, of the unceded lands upon we would upon which we meet and live and share today. We acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islands people, spirit, imagination, and rich history of storytelling, creativity, and knowledge. These gifts that they share with us are an inspiration to all Australians. We pay our respects to the ancestors past, present, and emerging. We are committed to building a brighter future together and look forward to establishing deeper connections between all Australians and our First Nations people. So welcome. Uh, I'm really excited today. We have an amazing webinar planned for you. Um, we have two amazing speakers and I hope we can dive into 
a mountain of questions and hopefully um, clear up a lot of things or answer anything that you might have going on uh, or any questions that you might have. You'll probably see in the um, comment section that there's going to be a good mix today of people that are brand new to the technology that are wanting to get some information about how to enter the market or where the industry is going, but also some uh, long term uh, we'll call them legacy uh, providers who have been in this space for uh, quite a long time. Uh, you never stop learning. Uh, I think this is a really great space for this um, opportunity. So uh, I'll present our first two speakers as well. So we have Amy Valentine from um, my team. She's the sales executive here at Floria. If you're talking about anything to do with Matterport in Australia or New Zealand, 100% you've spoken to her. She's a fountain of wisdom within this space. Uh, she'll be running through a general overview of Matterport and taking a look at the past 12 months of trends in our industry. It has been a, a turbulent 12 months. You've probably heard it all before um, with the pandemic. Uh, in this space, there is also a lot of opportunity within this as well. And Amy will be running through a few of um, these areas of key interest. And secondly, um, I'd love to welcome aboard uh, Bruce Wells, the Managing Director of Matterport in APAC, based out of Singapore. Um, he's joined us before on a webinar. And it's been great to have him back again today. He's going to be diving into some exciting new features that are upcoming and also be um, taking a snapshot of where Matterport is currently globally. Um, so it's great that we have a global audience um, and we have some new and existing customers on board. Uh, I think I've spoken plenty, so I'm gonna pass it along to Amy to kick us off. Um, excited to hear where this all goes and uh, feel free to add any questions as we go. I'll be monitoring the process. Amy, across to you. Awesome, thank you for the lovely intro. Thanks, Steve, much appreciated. Um, I will just share my screen. I've got a quick presentation to run through to talk about um, the previous 10 years. Um, as Steve said, I am the sales executive at Captured and Foria. My name is Amy Valentine. Um, I've been working with the company for a couple of years now. Um, and I'd also like to congratulate Bruce and the Matterport team for 10 years of Matterport. That's incredible. What a huge, huge achievement. Um, on top of that, we recently had a birthday as well at Captured. We've been around for seven years, which is super exciting to have been part of Matterport's journey for such a long amount of time. Um, we've seen so many changes over the past I mean, seven years, but in particular, the last 12 months um, during COVID and everything. It's been, yeah, pretty turbulent. <laughs> um, so starting from... Our CEO, Trent, purchasing one of the very first Matterport cameras back in 2014. I think he said it was the 11th of the production line. So super, super early on getting involved with that. And um, that's, you know, how Captured was born and, and scanned and everything from there. So this is a photo I've got from back when we could go to events. Um, Bruce and I went to one in Brisbane. Um, it was really, really fun, really good to actually speak to people not long after this was when all, the, all of the lockdowns really happened and, and, and um, we weren't able to go anywhere. And, you know, we were recently sad to not be able to go to ARIC, but Sorry, it's okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I don't think the attendees can see your screen. Do you mind resharing? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, cool. Of course that happened. Is that, are we presenting now? We are good to go. Okay. <laughs> of course that happened. Um, the demo rules, we always talk about how every single time you, you want to do a tech demo, something will go wrong. Um, we got that one out of the way at least. So yeah, this is the photo I was talking about from back at the um, the event in Brisbane. It was it was really nice, and I got to meet Bruce in person, which was lovely as well. Um, so I won't go over all of that again. But um, the past twelve months have been have been yeah huge. We have released over thirteen new features in Captured. Um, some of the most notable ones are obviously AR Connect. That's our augmented reality application, which allows you to view your Matterport tours on site, but also through that digital layer. So you can see all of your matter tags, you can do measurements. Um, oh, what's happened? Oh, well, there we go. Um, yeah, you can do all of your measurements in augmented reality, which is incredible. Um, you can even add matter tags. And, and in the long run, this is gonna be such a huge, huge feature for building integration um, of uh, all of the different kinds of features that are there. Um, with virtual staging, we've also um, developed different things like being able to change the lighting. You can add your own um, custom 
matter tags and change them to be whatever suits your branding and so that you can quickly identify if you're doing some sort of um, asset management you can see what specific features you want to get to straight away without faffing about basically um, you can also integrate audio which is something that's actually been asked for quite a bit from all of you so we were super excited to be able to launch that um, and we recently, oh yeah, the lighting, I covered that. Um, we also recently um, launched Media Embed. So again, something that has been asked for loads by everyone. So super excited to have that available to all of you. So you can have videos embedded into your TVs and have your little marketing reels playing or just additional information as well. Um, great for condition reporting, showing a drippy tap. That's one of the ones that I could foresee being used quite a bit. So you obviously can't show that with a photo. So it's pretty great to be able to integrate a video to demonstrate those kinds of damages. Um, floor plans. Um, so we've obviously worked a lot on our floor plans and you can upload your own templates with Captured and generate it however you want it. Again, we want it to match your branding. Essentially our vision is to democratize 3D virtual tours so that everyone can create the content the way they want to and, and have it look the way it suits your branding. Um, our intention for Captured has always, always been to be able to um, fill in the gaps of what you want to be able to provide to your clients and add additional value, which you, of course, can then on charge and um, make sure it suits your business model the best way possible. So we were excited to be able to offer white labeling for free. That was one of the big features. And it's also kind of a quiet achiever in all of the features that we've released. Um, super excited to see how everyone uses that to their advantage um, and demonstrating their tours as their own because they are yours. It's your work. You've, you've done a lot to create this for your clients. So it's great to be able to to present it that way as well. Um, our measurement tool, I wanted to bring this up because as part of that whole vision of creating um, your Matterport tours, the way you want to be able to show them to your clients, we have originally developed our own measurement tool through Captured, which we were able to discontinue, which is pretty cool because that means that, you know, we are listening to you, we're ahead of the curve in what you want us to provide to you. And it was great to have Matterport also then launch their measurement tool and we were able to discontinue something. So I think it's it's great to be able to celebrate not only the things that you were able to create, but the things that you were able to stop doing. Uh, so to dive into some stats, um, this is a little bit real estate focused, so I'm sorry if you're not in the real estate industry, but the, these stats are um, still pretty amazing. So we found that buyers are 60% more likely to email an agent and 95% more likely to call when the listing has a 3D virtual tour. Um, particularly, so this was information we got from realestate.com.au. 80% more inquiries across the board and a 400% increase on the number of digital inspections viewed on realestate.com.au in 2020, June, in comparison to, to May, June 2019. So that is a testament not only to what happened during the, the COVID pandemic and everything, just the whole landscape changing, um, we definitely saw an increase in interest and a deeper understanding develop during that period. And that's evident in the numbers that have come out of um, 2020. 72% of renters said that they would lease an apartment or home without seeing it in person. Um, so sight unseen, we've talked about it heaps in the past, but it's pretty amazing to have a figure to be able to put to that. and you know, again, this all comes out of COVID. So the past 12 months, I've been joking that it was, you know, 2020 was a long five years. Um, and we learned a lot. So 95% of people surveyed said that they would also be more likely to rent a property if it included the 3D tour overall. 
and Domain reported that um, users spent 52% longer on listings that contain a virtual tour. Um, and again, another quote from our, one of our favorite clients who've been with us super early on, Jealous Craig. Um, Sam, I, yeah, you were on the call. Thanks for joining. And um, obviously Angela had this great quote about being in lockdown and still being able to do your job as a result of having the ability to um, showcase your listings via virtual tours. So going back to what I said before about the landscape totally changing, one of the things that's changed really dramatically that I'm witnessing firsthand is the conversations that I'm having. So a year ago or, you know, a year and a half ago, the conversations were so much more about why, you know, why Matterport, what, what good is it for me? And as soon as the pandemic happened, this conversation completely pivoted to, okay, how do I apply this? to my individual business? What's my return on investment? Um, these are my numbers and we, now my conversations are so much more focused on number crunching and actually talking about the, the depth of, of how this can impact your business as an individual. So one of those questions is obviously for, for newcomers as well, asking where all of the Matterport cameras are located. So I thought I would include that in here. So we've got, this map, which is a live map showing where all of the Matterport cameras currently are, but then we can get a little bit more granular and look at the growth in the last 12 months. So this is it, with all of the states in Australia, we can see that it's, it's probably no surprise New South Wales and Victoria kind of leading the charge there. Um, but Queensland is really not that far behind. And I think another notable stat there is Tassie. I feel like Tassie is such a beautiful place and um, there's so much value there for Matterport virtual tours to capture these houses that are off the grid and really um, regional in the way that they're set up. So I would love to see more cameras going into Tassie and seeing more virtual tours of, of Tasmanian homes. Um, and New Zealand, I haven't forgot about you. you tend to get left off maps, but not my map. Um, Auckland and Christchurch, you are obviously leading the charge. I don't think that that's a surprise either in terms of growth. Um, I was pretty amazed to see that Palmerston North and Gisborne were not that far away from Wellington, um, considering Wellington's one of the, the larger places. And then obviously there's a big chunk just going, just random little suburbs all throughout um, New Zealand as well. Then I broke it down by industry as well. So this is interesting because again, not surprising, Matterport service providers are the biggest um, camera purchases and then residential real estate. This took a big jump um, during COVID um, where I was finding that a lot of real estate agents who um, didn't really see the value in, in having a Matterport virtual tour, suddenly needed it, particularly for the property management space, um, because it allowed you to continue doing all of your inspections and um, opens and everything. Because as far as I'm concerned, renting a property is an absolute basic human right to be able to find somewhere to live. So um, this was something that I think is really valuable, particularly during the pandemic. The other section, so this is something as well, that includes museums and galleries. This is an industry that we've really seen take um, flight over the last year. Being able to still have people th come through the doors essentially has been really, really valuable for museums and galleries over the last 12 to 18 months. And I just wanted to include this little photo. It's the closest thing I have to a team photo in the last sort of 12 months. Um, these are all the beautiful faces that are working behind the scenes on creating captured and um, you know keeping me sane while I'm, I'm working through everything and working well we're all working from home as well so um, this was when we were able to catch up in person um, and I just wanted to include that we also this photo makes me laugh just side note for just two seconds because I feel like we kept to all the traditions of a group photo. One person's blinking, one person's blurry, one person has their tongue out, one person's looking away, <laughs> and someone's doing bunny ears. 
<laughs> we checked all the boxes as far as I'm concerned with this group photo. <laughs> um, and that was all, um, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. So thank you for listening to me and I'll hand you over to Steve and Bruce to continue talking from here. I'm sure you'll have heaps of questions, particularly for Bruce. The hype continues with uh, your <laughs> quick preview. Uh, it was too quick for anyone to read, so it's still built, but it's a good point to start off. Uh, we will be announcing a huge promotion uh, at the end of this webinar. Um, it's once in 10 years, technically, because it's a 10 year anniversary um, promotion that we've got running and we'll provide more information on that towards the end. Uh, thank you so much for that, Amy. It was some amazing insights, just looking at the chat. Uh, people were really interested in a lot of those stats. Um, a lot of the real estate based ones were all coming out of um, realestate.com.au, all of your stats that you're providing on region based is our information that we've got based on cameras that we sold. It's probably not an exact science because there are other cameras in circulation that do come here, but it's a pretty good indication of where these things sit. Uh, something that uh, Amy and I speak to our customers about frequently is around, um, we're at the infancy of uh, this industry and this technology. And so um, if you compare it to, let's say photography, for instance, you have tens of thousands of real estate photography businesses um, that operate successfully here in Australia and New Zealand. Um, and at the moment we've got uh, 500, uh, maybe 750 cameras in circulation. And so when you make that comparison, you can see that we're still right at the start of this journey. And um, if you were to compare it to the real estate photography, this is probably when black and white photos were starting to take off. And we've got a huge journey ahead of us and huge opportunities, um, which means all these people that are starting now or who've started in the, the uh, previous few years, um, really seeding this market um, and looking forward to a long and prosperous future as well. So thank you so much for that, Amy. Um, some amazing insights in that piece. And yeah, please feel free to uh, throw your questions in the Q&A or the um, live chat. I'm doing my best to kind of keep across both. Um, I could see some interesting pieces coming through. Um, Andrew, 2000 properties in Tasmania. That's huge. Um, I didn't actually look at the map. Did you have a percentage on Tasmania, Amy? 2%. 2%. <laughs> it's coming from you, Andrew. Um, I'm sure there's a few others, but that's a huge, um, huge effort down there. Um, beautiful. Um, all right. Um, across now, we'll move on to uh, Bruce Wells, as I mentioned before, managing director for Matterport um, in APAC. Uh, I won't say too much. I'll pass it across to him uh, to take over. But yeah, please feel free to put all your questions in the chat, and we'll get to them as we go. Bruce, across to you. Great, thanks, uh, Stephen, Amy. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to present today. Um, yeah, very excited to go through some updates on what's going on uh, with Matterport. Uh, we will talk a bit about our 10 year anniversary. Uh, I probably have more content than I have allotted time. So I will kind of without further ado, I'm gonna jump into this. Uh, and I do wanna make sure we do have some time for Q and A at the end. Uh, just a thumbs up, you can see my screen. Fantastic. All right. So I've got three kind of topic areas I'm going to go through today. Uh, I, I do want to talk about the digital twin growth. Uh, Stephen and Amy both alluded to this great uh, or mentioned this great uh, uptick we've been seeing. Um, and we, we and we're really just getting started here. So I'm going to share some actually without knowing what you were going to present, Amy. Uh, there's a good uh, segue into some of the new industry verticals that are looking to and how they can use digital twins to change and transform their businesses. Um, I'm going to talk about our developer platform. We have some really exciting things going on in the broader ecosystem of third-party developers uh, who are leveraging uh, Matterport, and we'll talk more about that. And then last thing, I want to talk about some um, uh, things about our 10-year anniversary, some stuff that's in the future that's coming up. Um, so without further ado, let me jump into this. So I wanted to start with just one kind of slide about the kind of credentials or the, the uh, kind of an overview of Matterport. Um, we will be celebrating our 10-year anniversary tomorrow. That's, uh, that officially is our, our anniversary date. Uh, we now have over a quarter of a million customers using Matterport in more than 150 geographies. Uh, I joined Matterport about 18 months ago. I think we've added um, customers in more than 30 new countries. I'm gonna, uh, the credential side when I first joined said 120, now we're up to 150. I think when I first joined, we were at two plus million spaces and in 18 months now we've, we've um, gone past that 5 million uh, space uh, milestone. Uh, it's really exciting. I think we added more spaces in the last two years through all of your efforts and in using Matterport and driving this into your businesses and helping the end customers get value. Uh, and we've added more spaces in the last two years than I believe we did in the first eight years as a company. 
Uh, and this, this exciting growth is not slowing down. We're seeing more and more use cases, uh, more, more industries adopting digital twins. So many of you are familiar with us, of course, in the promotion of real estate, residential, commercial, even industrial manufacturing. But the use cases for Matterport continue to expand across the basically the entire customer, uh, property life cycle. So we're working more and more with architects and engineering firms in the design of, of properties, working with the construction firms and contractors to track progress on the construction and build of, of, of new properties. We're doing more and more in facilities management and unlocking value of a digital twin to drive new efficiencies in the operation and management of, of spaces. And then last and definitely not least, some really exciting progress we're making in unlocking value in the insurance and restoration industry, streamlining the, um, the claims process and just adding value into uh, to the basically the, the larger ecosystem in that insure and repair uh, section. And also the, the types of companies or the types of, of properties, you know, again, our, our, our anchor and our foundation of our business um, has been and will continue to be in the, in the real estate uh, sector, but we're doing more and more into uh, retail, commercial, travel, uh, industrial, and just a, a wide variety of different uh, industries. I thought I would just do a quick snapshot of some of my kind of favorite spaces that are not the typical ones. Um, and I'll just quickly touch on these just to illustrate some of the incredible breadth of capabilities that are, are the, the ecosystem of Matterport users are, are on how they're adding value into, into um, their business, the customer's businesses here. So the one on the top left, this is Bank of Italy. It's an 18 story building um, in, in construction. And you can see there from the dollhouse view, this you know, great uh, multi-story commercial property captured in all its glory. Uh, and, a, and a great dollhouse uh, view of that, uh, of, that, of that large commercial construction. Uh, the one below that, the bottom left, that is a factory in China. Uh, this is a car manufacturing uh, factory, a massive place. Um, I should have actually written down how big it is, but it's, it's, it's one of the biggest uh, sites that we've ever scanned. Uh, and we did all aspects of the general assembly, the plant, the painting, the welding, the, just the entire production line. And it was due in the midst of COVID where investors and, and, the, and their customers couldn't get on site to do tours and visits, uh, their suppliers and vendors. This was a great way to bring a virtual experience and to help that business continue. Uh, the one in the middle is a, um, I think it's a substation. Uh, we've got you know, telecom companies, electric companies, civil um, uh, utility companies that are using digital twins to drive, again, added efficiencies, especially when you think about how spread out some of their network is uh, in terms of geographic distance. The, the one below that, which is really hard to see, and I wasn't sure how to get a good capture of this, this is a tunnel, a, a tunnel in Finland um, that was captured with Matterport. So I just took the, uh, the aerial view uh, of this to illustrate what that tunnel looks like. Um, but again, just other examples that are, that are not in the kind of normal um, space that you would think of Matterport. The top right is a engine room of a super tanker um, or a super uh, cargo ship in Singapore where they've, uh, the, the, this customer scanned the engine room, again, to help drive efficiencies for inspections and given everything that's going on with travel restrictions to have this documentation uh, of their fleet. And then the bottom right is a, um, an unfortunate uh, fire in a, in a home and just illustrating the capture of a uh, building a 3D model of a, of a fire. In this case, it's for the help with the claims process. So again, just, ex just some neat examples of going beyond the, uh, the, the promotion of real estate uh, into some other really neat use cases. I'm gonna shift now into a very tactical, just gonna kind of highlight some features that have been launched and some new features that are coming out. Some of you may already be using this and aware of it, I hope. Uh, we recently launched a blur brush capability. Um, this was um, out of demand uh, from you know, our users saying that we need to have this ability to, whether that be um, highlighting or marking up um, family photos or confidential information in a scan. Uh, now you can do that using a, a, a blur brush capability similar to the old paint tools that you may recall. 
Um, very easy to use. If you haven't done this, this is it should be it's all available into your Matterport subscription. So I'm just bringing that one, to, uh, reminding people we have this uh, this capability. A couple new things that are coming out. So this is still in development. It's not available yet. So coming soon. Big red letters up there, but exciting to talk about is a, a feature called Notes. Um, this is th oh, think about where you can have a threaded message with um, other users in your Matterport account, where you could be tagging content, tagging information. So I could say, "Hey, Amy, I think we need to you know change the countertop," or in your earlier example, we need to fix the leaky faucet. Um, it could put in some information about that. Amy would get notified. She could go in and, and, and view the property, see where that note was left. Uh, again, creating more of a collaborative um, interface with um, uh, on top of on top of your Matterport space. So more information to come on that in the future. Um, oops, sorry, wrong direction. The next one, again, I have very little on this one, but I thought the illustration with this was neat. Um, the team is working on. A, um, a trim mesh, um, uh, a, a trim tool in the mesh. So in other words, being able to edit or trim your models, not in capture, but being able to do that in workshop. Um, so something that has been asked in the past, uh, again, this is early stages development, but I just wanted to give you kind of a glimpse of some of the things that we're working on um, and you know, exciting, exciting stuff in the future with Matterport. It's a great segue into this next section, which is about the SDK and the API or our developer toolkit. As Matterport extends its reach into new industry verticals, opens up opportunities for more and more customers around the world, it's, it gets more daunting to, to be able to provide all the feature functionality that's required in each of those domain areas. As a result of that, we have opened up Matterport to third-party developers, and the broader ecosystem of Matterport users to be able to build and extend the build applications to extend the value of Matterport through custom applications. What Amy and Steven talked about with Captured is a great example of that. AR Connect, the virtual staging, and all the awesome stuff that's being developed by Foria and Captured is a just a great example of what's possible by extending and building applications on top of Matterport. There are a, um, I think right now we have over 400 developers that have signed up for the licenses and are working on, again, extending the value of Matterport through these, through these custom applications. I've just got a couple I'm gonna show uh, quite quickly here, just as quick visual illustrations of what's possible. And again, I think we're just scratching the surface here. This is the early, you know, early release of the developer toolkit. More and more functionality will be released over time. Uh, so some examples you can see here is the programmatic Programmatic, uh, programmatic controlling of matter tags, where you could dynamically be adding in content. Um, as you see on the example on the right, based, you could, this is a little trivia game. Um, if you answer the question correct, you can see the dot turns, uh, the matter tag turns green. If you got it wrong, it's red. Um, again, just to illustrate how you can have two way interactions and uh, programmatic controls of matter tags. Uh, if you think about the you know version, the early versions of matter tags was you you know went into workshop and you added the content in and it was quite static and you'd have to control it that way. Now there's a whole bunch of different ways to do that in a more automated way. Again, uh, that's provided through the through the developer toolkit. A couple more examples. Actually, Amy highlighted this in uh, with with the uh, in her presentation with captured the live video streaming, uh, doing object insertion. Uh, there's also an example on the left, you can see taking the field of view of a security camera and being able to insert that into the model to show you the, the coverage of a security camera. This is coming out of a, a use case of a client that does uh, commercial construction or commercial security and being able to show their customers um, using a Matterport 3D digital twin, what the coverage would look like um, through, uh, you know, through that digital, digital experience. And lastly, and, and definitely not least, is um, uh, the insertion of IoT content. So the top example there, you can see dynamic content overlaid into your Matterport space. So creating basically a visualization layer of dynamic data. So uh, IoT devices, we've seen more and more companies that are investing in you know, smart buildings, IoT dynamic sensors. Now you can actually take that and integrate it into your Matterport space to create this new level of, of inter, inter, um, interaction. Uh, and then the bottom is, again, another example of virtual staging. Um, but I would encourage you to look at the uh, what, what Captured has done. It's a, a lot better than the example I'm showing you. 
Lastly is we will soon be announcing a change on our webpage um, uh, to highlight partners. Uh, partners that are part of this growing ecosystem of third-party developers. Uh, very happy and not surprising to uh, let everybody know that Foria is going to be one of the premier uh, launch partners when we when we launch this on our website. I think there are six companies that have been earmarked uh, to be part of that launch, and it's great that uh, we see Foria getting um, getting their rightful place into the website. It's some amazing content that's being developed. I'll shift to the last section here, and I just want to talk a little bit about where Matterport's going. Um, so you can get a glimpse that this, this is moving beyond the virtual tour, moving beyond what we what you may have traditionally seen as Matterport's kind of sweet spot. Um, and we're, if you think about us today about transforming the, the build, buildings into data, tomorrow what we want to do is we want to transform by using that data to add additional value. Um, and there are some exciting things happening in the world of AI, uh, in the world of understanding the content uh, of your Matterport spaces to add additional value um, as we move kind of forward into what's, what's, what's possible in the future here. Um, and this is you know, an example here of some of the questions that will be possible to answer in the context of your Matterport experience. So no longer just limited to say the virtual experience, but actually wanting to in, interrogate and look at the content and the information that you've captured in your Matterport space. Um, so you know, examples such as, I wanna locate all the sprinkler heads in a commercial property. Um, you can see here, I wanna see how many windows in that building, uh, what's the average um, size of a kitchen in the London flat. Uh, and there's a whole bunch more here. Um, there's a lot more information. We'll be sharing more about these, uh, these capabilities over time. Uh, just one example on that sprinkler one. Now here, here again is an, an ability where you could actually do a search of content within the space. Some of this is AI driven, some of it's manual, but this is going to continue to evolve as we unlock the, the kind of art of what's possible, given that we have this great contextual understanding of what's inside a Matterport space. I would encourage you to not have a load error when you're presenting. What happened here? Hold on, there we go, all right. Um, last, I think this is my last slide, Stephen, so you'll be able to get the mic away from me. Um, the last thing I wanted to share with everybody is, uh, you may be aware that Matterport is planning uh, a public launch. If you um, wanna learn more about this, I would encourage you to go to the investors page on our website. Um, in that page, there is some really exciting things about what's happening in the future of Matterport. Uh, the video that you can see playing on the screen here, I'd encourage you to take a, take a listen to that. It really does talk about what the direction and where we're going as a company. Um, there's also some really neat information about uh, what we're doing in terms of our vision and direction. So I would encourage you to take a look, uh, take a look at that, uh, that website. And then lastly, as I do hand over back to Amy, um, we are you know, super excited about our 10 year anniversary. This is a, an incredible milestone but it is really just the start. Uh, we, are, we are now well primed to take and go forward and to drive additional value for the, the broader ecosystem. Uh, and in celebration of our 10 year anniversary, we also have some special promotions that we would like to share with you. So with that, I will hand it back to Amy. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Bruce. So that slide that I accidentally shared a moment ago, um, I will share it intentionally this time. Um, we do have a pretty awesome 24-hour flash sale for the Matterport cameras at the moment. So 24 hours from when this webinar ends, um, and including you know during the webinar. Except I won't be able to respond to you if you but if you want to get in, you can. So it'll be 18% off, which equates to a thousand dollars. So the camera will be 4,900, oh, yeah, 4,945 plus GST. Um, and for the first 10 orders that come through, we're also throwing in a free Manfrotto tripod and a free hard case as well, a HPRC one, it's red. And both of those things are of the value of $855 plus GST. So it's a pretty good deal. You're overall getting about $1,900 off for the whole package. So that was pretty cool. And we will have um, more information coming out by EDM about all of that as well to all of you, but we wanted to talk about it now. Um, and that's that. So if you want to use the 
promo code, you can email that over to us at info at scanned.com.au or just you might already have my email or give me a call. That's it. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Bruce and Amy. And just as uh, reiterating a couple of things there, uh, we will be sending out an EDM with all of the details of this. Uh, this is literally a once in 10 year uh, sale. Uh, I've been working with this industry for yeah almost eight years and nothing quite um, marries up to this. It's almost $2,000 of value, including the tripod and the hard cases, including the discount on the camera. Um, so there's some amazing opportunities there. I can see some questions starting to flow through. And so we'll dive into those in a second. Um, please feel free to keep sending them through um, and we'll get to as many as possible um, as we go through. Just before we do though, I just wanted to comment on a couple of things, Bruce, that you were talking about there. Uh, the notes feature that's coming out soon. I think that's an amazing opportunity. Um, I was talking about it with our team across so many different industries, be it um, property management. So with a tenant being able to access it, communicate with their real estate agent really easily at a certain point through a renovation process, insurance processes, commercial, I can almost see applications for it in almost any industry. And the way that it was presented there, it almost looked like Google Docs where you can kind of go back and forth on it. So really exciting about that one. And yeah, the trimming and masking feature, I saw Skeeter, um, long time captured customer, long time Matterport user um, over in, Hawaii, correct if I'm wrong, Skeeter. Um, but yeah, you mentioned it's a long time coming. It is it for, and I've explained this to a lot of customers, it's really difficult um, what they're trying to do and trying to provide that in a simple way. And so I can appreciate why it's taken so long, um, but I'm sure anyone that's worked with this technology before you've scanned a beautiful space because it captures what, how it captures sometimes the roof isn't as you exactly how you want it to see. So be able to kind of put one of those trimming marks on top of it and cleaning up your model for end presentation um, is gonna be so useful, but yeah, it is really difficult. Um, explaining it quite simply makes it sound easy, but um, you're working with a 3D mesh in a 2D format and then making it accessible and easy for everyone to use. Uh, I can understand the complexities, but really good to hear that it's coming out. So amazing work from the Matterport side of things there, Bruce. Um, let's dive into a couple questions. Um, one straight out of the bat, which I think we all knew was coming. Uh, and this one's directed for you, Bruce. Is there a Pro 3 coming out? Yeah, and, I, and I'm sorry, I meant to preempt the question because I know it was coming. Uh, the, the quick answer is, as everybody knows and can see from my presentation, you know, we are a technology company. We are continuing to innovate and develop new feature functionality capability. Um, uh, but I can tell you, we do not have plans to release a Pro 3 this year um, or a, 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 the next generation camera. Uh, we are uh, lots of new things in the pipeline, as I, I shared with you here. Uh, we'll continue to drive new innovations, but that's not, um, uh, not in the pipeline for this year. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, it makes complete sense. A lot of the work's going into the technology, like the trimming tool, for instance, where the technology that we're providing 4K imagery on a sphere and what we're, um, the Dolphus House views and everything else that's been provided by Matterport is still global leading. Um, and so the focus on the technology to make that even better uh, from the software point of view, I think is a really good task for the time being. Um, there's another question here open to both of you, whoever would like to jump in, um, but it's around giving an example of how you could potentially use Matterport uh, for a home renovation project. Amy, would you like to try and cover that one? Yeah, sure. Um, I've definitely seen Matterport used in that situation. Um, so it's particularly good for basically generating timestamped versions of each stage of the renovation process. So you capture it at you know one month in and then two months in and so on and so forth. And also using our captured overlay, you can create a menu bar so that you can just send the singular link on to your client as well and they can just switch between each version really easily. Um, so that's one incredible use case for Matterport tours, absolutely, particularly because you do have the measurement capability and even floor plan if that would be useful for you at that stage. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else you'd add. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd add it. So I, I fully agree and I think the other use cases are that initial upfront scan. So you're planning to do a renovation, capture that if you're using an architect or a design studio and they wanna actually put that into AutoCAD or into design software, uh, you know, through a matter pack, you can extract those 3D data assets and actually accelerate that, that, uh, that, that process. Um, the other side I've seen is um, because again, you have a level of dimensional accuracy that's provided if you need to get uh, vendors to provide quotes on the painting or carpeting or whatever you may be. No need to do on-site visits. Some 
some places you know, charge for that visit. Now you can say, well, take a look at this link. You can see all the measurements. You could add them in in advance so they don't actually have to do it themselves. Um, so I've seen just efficiencies being added into that, that ecosystem that way. And then the last one I would just add is the, you know, at the end of the project, capturing it. Um, so you have kind of a before and after. This could be used for your marketing. So, you know, what you've done in terms of the uplift if, um, uh, of the project, if you are on that design side. Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, you also answered the follow-on question there as well from uh, the same person, Alan uh, Donnelly. So thank you for sending that through, Alan. Um, it was around um, using it to take measures, for example, refitting the bathroom. So just in quick summary, in preparation for the renovation, you can scan it, put it into AutoCAD, give it to your architects. They can use that. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, 99.6% accurate. Yeah, yeah I, I see it advertised as 99%, but you know, there's it, the, the, the quality of your scan and the, freak, and, the, and the number of scan points will influence that. Um, but there are some best practice guides on our, um, about how to you know, get the most out of that accuracy. Yeah. But yeah, right. that's kind of the ballpark you're in. Yeah, so getting ready for before the renovation and as the renovation goes through, um, having those progress reports as Amy was talking about, and that also transcends renovations, but anything commercial based or anything that you're changing, um, really good as an insurance um, process as well. You can see where things are going uh, through that process in itself. Um, uh, let us know if they had any follow-on questions there and we can come back to it as well. Um, Anton, um, just asking for a repeat of the bonus deal. Um, Amy, do you just want to give um, that again? Just for Absolutely. The so we've got $1,000 off the camera. So it's 4,000. Oh, no, I'm blanking every time I go to say it. Well, $1,000 off. I'll put it in the chat and I'll message it. So 5495 plus GST. Um, and then we've also got the free tripod and free hard case for the first 10 people who put in their order as well, um, which is valued at $855 plus GST Australian. Um, so that's, that's all Australian dollar, by the way. I didn't mention that. Um, and free shipping anywhere within Australia as well. So if you're a New Zealand client, then there is a FedEx charge of $400, which is unfortunately unavoidable, um, but you don't have to pay the Australian GST. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. And um, it's worth iterating because uh, I can see that we've got a few international customers. We, we are the distributor for Matterport in Australia and New Zealand. So this deal is for this region. Um, we are set technically six hours ahead of the actual Matterport uh, 10 year anniversary. And I know that Matterport have an announcement tomorrow, um, which I'm sure would be uh, something similar. I can't say that for sure. We kind of worked this one together with uh, Bruce and his team. So um, this is for Australia and New Zealand for that opportunity. But if you're interested, get in contact, we can pass you on to Matterport um, um, when the time comes anyway, as it comes through. Dean Sholey, um, welcome back. Um, Dean's from New Zealand. Good to see you back in the chat. Um, he's asking if there's going to be any improvements for larger projects uh, from the code side from Matterport. Um, interestingly enough, uh, I was going through some of the larger projects that we've been working on and I know back in 2016, we scanned an Ikea. And at that time, we had to break it up into a couple of parts because it was too big to play on a computer. But now it works completely fine. So I know that, that work is happening there. But was there any updates from your side, Bruce, in terms of large scale projects being optimized? Yeah. So some of it's kind of behind the scenes. And you may not already realize it, but we are processing more larger and larger spaces. I mean, some of the illustrations and examples I gave are testimonies to that. Um, so, yeah, we're continuing to be able to support larger spaces. Um, as everybody probably knows, you know, there are different areas where there's limitations. Um, the big thing is make sure you have enough memory, RAM, and hard disk space on your iPad or, or Android device. Uh, that's one of the elements. There's a limitation. Uh, there's obviously the processing side. Um, but we are, we, as, as we're moving into bigger commercial industrial manufacturing uh, sites, we are uh, creating the ability to, just, to do larger spaces. And that will continue on that path. Um, hopefully that gives you, it, it's hard to be very specific because it's not about the size, it's about the amount of data. So if you had a 200,000 square foot empty warehouse, you may be able to capture that in one space, but if it was full of content, it may struggle to do that because it's about the data that's not, that's captured, not the area. Awesome. Thank you, Bruce. And by the way, as we're answering these questions, uh, feel free to go back to the chat to let us know if you want any more, more information. I can see the questions flowing in here. And so we'll um, endeavor to get through as many as possible as we can. Um, Sebastian, I'll quickly take this one for you. You're asking about the GIFs and the short and long intros that are generated automatically from Matterport. And you're asking if you'll be able to select those 
um, in the near future. The reason why they're offered for free and automatic is because they're computer generated um, and they're able to be created uh, really quickly and obviously for free because there's no human interaction. And that's why it becomes a little bit more um, inaccessible. But there are features and third party providers and partners that are using um, the SDK and API that Bruce was talking about to automate these videos. And I know there's some uh, features in the SDK that are make that available and there will be providers um, creating services around this. And also, if you weren't aware, um, there's an amazing company, we get no credit for this, uh, but Matavids, they create really good Matterport videos. Um, sorry, videos from your Matterport tours as well. Uh, check them out. American based company, uh, I believe, maybe Canadian. Um, they're not going to like me not getting that right. I'm pretty sure they're American. Um, North American. North American, yeah. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> Clear that up for me. Um, a, a similar follow-on question, I guess, to what you're talking about there, Bruce, uh, around uh, the new developments, the features that are being created um, that you're talking about, are they geared more to work best with the Pro 2 rather than the 360? Does this come back to, I guess, the, the data that's being captured that you're talking about, or is it slightly different? Well, that's probably a bigger question question to answer. I mean, our, our strategy continues to be around this, what we call capture ubiquity. So supporting multiple cameras, uh, each one has a different use case. Um, I, I don't know if any of you tried using like the iPhone, especially the iPhone 12 Pro uh, with LiDAR um, on a tripod, you, you really can create some incredible scans with it. Um, but it's, but it's not going to, you're not going to do a, a larger property with that. Uh, so it's kind of a, a horses for courses. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm answering the question, but I would say that our strategy doesn't change. We are looking at, you know, uh, creating more value across a, a variety of different capture devices, but certainly the Pro 2 still stands on its own as, you know, one of the most cost-effective 3D, true 3D cameras in the market, uh, if not the, the, the most cost-effective. Uh, and I think it's important because this, this is, it is capturing in both three dimension as well as it's capturing high resolution imagery. So you will get a superior um, output because of the, of the hardware technology it's used in capturing that space. Perfect. Yeah, awesome. I think that answers it clearly. Again, if um, you'd like any more information, just let us know in the chat and we'll come back to it. Um, Amy, this one's been directed to you from Philippa Walsh. Um, unsure how tenants could use this. Um, if you could answer this now, or I could speak to Amy later. Great opportunity for answering it now. I'm assuming this is in regards to the tour and potentially the notes. Um, correct if I'm wrong here, Philippa, but Amy, how, how would you see tenants making use of the Matterport tour and potentially the notes feature that Bruce was talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Philippa. Um, so I think the best use case for tenants in particular, being able to view the Matterport tours is um, things like integrating Matter tags, uh, sorry, integrating information about appliances, so the air conditioner and um, any of the legal documentations that you might have signed with them, um, all of those things can be put into Matter Tags into the Matterport tour, which your tenant can then view and refer back to. Um, this is, of course, if you're keeping your space active. Um, and so I saw one of the questions there from Kingsley, I'll answer quickly, it's kind of um, on the same path of a space equaling one 3D scan of room, it's actually the entire building. So as soon as you hit upload, that's when it will count as a singular space. Um, so if you are keeping your um, spaces active, then you'd be able to do that with, with those. And same thing with the notes, you'd be able to communicate all within the space. So something I could see the notes being used for is if there was damage that maybe was not um, mentioned in the past and you would be able to let your tenant um, place notes and give you any additional information straight into your Matterport um, virtual tour so that you don't have to go back on site. Um, those are a couple of the use cases. Um, mostly I see the property management side, it's, it is more of an internal use and less so for tenants, to be honest. I still think there's a use case there, absolutely. It's just that you do have to keep it active for the tenant to be able to get in there. And, and that usually is not the way I see most of my property managers using their Matterport tours and keeping them all active. But yeah, I don't know if there's anything you'd want to add to that, Steve or Bruce? I think you've nailed it. Summarize the point that I made at the beginning, the uh, internal Matterport expert um, <laughs> questions. Um, perfectly answered. Um, there's a question here. I know we covered this in our last webinar, Bruce, but it might be good to get an update on this uh, around support, uh, Matterport support outside of the US. I know we covered it, but an update would be great. Yes, all that. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, so actually we do have uh, support outside the US. Our current coverage is, we have a team in the EMEA region out of uh, the UK. Um, and so there is overlap uh, with that. Uh, we do have now support numbers um, in APAC and we're, we're um, building out that team. So I, I guess it, it's a continue to be a work in progress. It's a big priority because obviously we're now expanding quite aggressively across the Asia Pacific time zones. Um, and it's, um, it's, it's work in progress, but coming quick, I guess is what I would say. Coming very quick. Yeah, yeah beautiful. And um, again, another benefit from purchasing through a VAR, and there's, correct if I'm wrong here, mm. 30 something VARs um, globally now in different regions of the world, is that you do have a local support uh, individual. Uh, we obviously can't help with uh, broken or damaged cameras that will always need to go back to head office. But um, with any general questions, uh, we are here to help our team um, and Amy uh, able to assist with most of the questions that you'll provide. And then what we usually do is if it's um, beyond where we're able to assist, then we'll pass you into the Matterport support team. But you most likely will have a local bar depending on uh, where you are located um, in this part of the world. Yeah, great, great point, Stephen. Thank you. Yeah, we now have 11 VARs in Asia Pacific. That's expanding to probably 15 by the end of next month. Um, yeah, and that, that footprint will continue to grow. So yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Um, and another shout out to a um, another awesome company doing amazing things. Sam, thanks for um, reminding me of this. I know that you used them recently, but Matafix, um, a company out of the US uh, who are repairing Matterport cameras, um, which are outside of warranties. So obviously, you have your one year warranties when you purchase a Matterport camera. Um, and we can discuss how we can kind of resolve that and provide you loaner cameras and everything else around it. But outside of that process, um, yeah, uh, speak to Matafix. They've got a Matterport a Matterport page, a Facebook page, um, and a website uh, that will allow you to kind of book in your sh um, repairs of the camera. And I know a few customers that have used them. Um, almost all of them have been from dropping a camera down the staircases. Um, so be wary if anyone new coming into the industry, two legs at the bottom of the stair, one leg at the top, always then it forward slightly so it doesn't fall back. But if it does, um, there are companies out there that can assist you in fixing that up as well. Um, so good shout out there, Sam. Thank you very much. Um, question here from Andrew Rigby. It's two sides of the question around digital twins, uh, the current model, sorry, the digital twins results in lots of active models that need to be remain active. The current hosting model fits well with traditional real estate users where you have small number of spaces active at any one time, but becomes uh, prohibitive when you have a large number of spaces continually active. Are there any plans for a different style of charging to suit this use case? Um, I'll pass this one across to you, Bruce, but before I do, um, just quickly in summary, so digital twin side of things, not in real estate, obviously you've got a living model of this space. People need to communicate on it. You might be having live IoT. You might be doing a whole bunch of things with it. So it needs to remain active for a long period of time. Um, and the current use case around active models with the subscriptions with Matterport, um, 25, 50, 100, a um, couple hundred, and then into your enterprise limits. I should know the exact numbers on that. I'm sorry, but it's around there. Um, before I do pass it on to Bruce, there are two sides to this. So yeah, the, the current spaces um, are um, in their bundles and you will have the ability and you are doing large numbers, the enterprise opportunities do really bring down the cost per um, space. But what we've been seeing with a lot of our customers that are in this area is that it's actually more of a business opportunity or a revenue opportunity uh, to have reoccurring revenue uh, from your clients, so passive income rather than these one-off scans. And so building in a annual or monthly licensing fee for the individuals that are using it, um, it could be quite minute, but it will cover the cost. And you build this up over time. If you have a thousand models that are paying a few dollars a month, all of a sudden you've got this really nice passive income coming through, um, even in some cases reducing your scan cost and then uh, providing that as a uh, opportunity is just something to think about. But Bruce, um, uh, over to you in terms of the pricing side of things with the plans, um, if there is anything to update there. Yeah, I, I guess two things. One is there are economies of scale. So as we're getting into clients that have tens of thousands of spaces, um, there are you know really exciting economies of scale that kick in when you get into the enterprise space. Um, I, I was going to add what you did, which is I think there's an opportunity, you know, there's value. If, if those spaces need to be active, um, that means you're probably providing some sort of value for your end customer, uh, or there's value into the business. And, you know, when you, when you look at the, uh, you know, the, the itemized cost, it is just a couple dollars a month. I know when you multiply that times a large amount, it can seem like a larger amount, but again, it goes back to, you know, what's the value that you're unlocking for the end customer. Um, the last thing I would add is even with the developer tools, it, you, there is a programmatic way to, to control and toggle, um, spaces being active and, and uh, not. 
So if you really have a large number and you and that's uh, becoming pro uh, problematic for the business, um, there may be technical ways to to create the optimal uh, management there. Yeah, awesome. I guess there's a, an assumption here as well. If you've got a lot of scans, um, firstly, it's a good problem to have. Um, and then kind of figuring out how you want to manage that problem is the next step to make it an advantage of where you're going. Um, it also feeds in, sorry, that was Andrew Rigby's question. It also feeds into Michael Petros's question very similarly, um, just around spaces. Let it be possible for an account to have a single Pro 2 space so that a client can own their own model outright. Um, yeah, this is definitely another use case for it. So being able to scan it, get the client to set up their own Matterport account um, and then transfer that model across to them. Um, just noting that you no longer have the ownership of that model though. So take that, take that into consideration um, when you're creating this process. But I know that this is um, becoming more and more common where you've got regular customers. Um, let's say you're an MSP and you service 20 different real estate agents or different brokerages. Um, each one of them could have their own accounts that you scan for and upload it to their account. So they just take care of the subscription side of things. Um, so yeah, that's definitely possible at the moment, Michael. A um, couple more questions here. I know we're running close to the one o'clock time. I appreciate you're probably very busy. Um, we love answering questions um, and being here and being helpful. So we're gonna stay on for a little bit longer um, and answer a few more questions that are sitting here. Uh, but for those of you who do need to um, run off, I do appreciate that it is a busy time of day. We're hoping to catch around the lunchtime side of things. Uh, again, we will be providing the recorded session of this afterwards in the next 24 hours. Um, there will be an EDM straight after this around the promotion um, that we're running, which is almost $2,000 worth of value. Um, for 24 hours as well. I just need to reiterate that. It's a 24 hour snap sale, flash sale, I think they're called, um, but there will be um, residual opportunities outside of that as well uh, with the larger Matterport global side of things um, in those pieces. And yes, please join the user groups, um, Matterport official user group, captured community group and the scan pages. Um, and uh, we'll feed back all of this information into there over the coming hours and days as well. Um, so thank you if you need to leave, but we'll continue to answer some of these last questions because there are some really good questions here. Um, and apologies, Bruce, I, I didn't ask if you've got time, but I assume you are. So you're stuck with us now for the next 10, 15 minutes. I, I do now. <laughs> Um, a question from Sam, uh, can we show, when can we show the inside of cupboards? So this is more of a scanning practicality question. Um, Amy, would you like to um, cover this one? Yeah, definitely. Um, this is another really good one for property management in particular. Um, I find the best way to capture inside cupboards is scan the entire room as you normally would is best practice. Um, a lot of us know, some of us might not, there's one either side of the door frame and then one in every corner of the room. If it's a larger room, you might wanna add a couple of extra ones in between those corner scans. Um, I would recommend doing that and then going through opening the cupboards and taking scans uh, with those open. And you can change the heights and things like that as well so that you can really get in there and actually see uh, all of the details of that internal cupboard. Um, the reason for scanning the entire room first is just something I've seen in my experience is if you don't do it this way, the camera does build the 3D data of that space as it's capturing the first time through. So you'll just end up with little bits of clipping of that mesh, um, which just can look a little bit off, um, or it might mean that you might not be able to click in a particular location. Particularly, um, I've seen this with doors, when you are scanning around a room with that door closed and then you try to go into that room and you simply cannot navigate through that door because it's already built up that 3D data as though the door is closed. Um, so that's the way I would recommend doing that. And then adding matter tags as well. Um, if you forget to scan it, you can take additional photos with your phone or get your tenant to send them if they've already in or um, the landlord and you can attach them via a matter tag as well. As I understand that those things can happen sometimes too. Awesome. Yeah, couldn't agree more. And I think with a couple of the, uh, so the notes feature potentially being released by Matterport and also our custom tags feature and captured, um, you could denote it with a custom tag and then even have a, a notes section. So over time, you can see how the uh, deterioration of a certain area of a property is tracking as well. Uh, hopefully that answers your um, question, Sam. The secondary one here, I, I answered in the chat um, during the webinar, it was around external drone. Um, you'll find, or what we've found is a lot of uh, MSPs also um, 
work or provide other services, be it uh, photography, drones, and a few other pieces within their arsenal. And so it comes up a lot around how you can include uh, drone imagery or any imagery um, for that matter. At the moment, the best way to do it is through a matter tag and linking to that image. Um, we've got a really exciting feature coming out uh, in the next uh, month or so, I'd say a couple months from Captured, where we're redoing our um, overlay completely. And so our menu systems are gonna be updated, the ability to um, link in aerial footages um, through the tour seamlessly, mobile and um, web accessibilities are gonna be really important on that. Having photo libraries as well, um, if you do multiple spaces and need to link to multiple 360 images, you'll understand in Matterport, you need to add those 360 images to each one. Um, with this new feature, you'll be able to add libraries of content or albums of content to each feature as well. So there's some really exciting um, features coming to solve that problem, Sam. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. Um, Kingsley, uh, interesting question here. So uh, what is the format of the 3D scans and can we extract them? Um, without using Matterport software. Uh, Bruce, I'll pass this one over to you. Uh, you're on mute, Bruce. Sorry, uh, I thought we were gonna get through one webinar without that comment coming up. Um, uh, actually, I, I was just hitting the response to that in the Q&A. Um, so the, the, uh, the 3D data assets are in a OBJ and an XYZ. Uh, they can be then extracted using, again, using the matter pack, and then that can go into, um, again, design software, recap, and then into Revit, sketch up things of that nature. I think, is that, is that, sorry, I was typing the response as you were asking. So I think no, it was I perfect. covered so, yeah, it twice. Okay. It, extracting it after it's in it. Um, and for complete clarity, you can't use the Matterport technology without using the Matterport technology. So if you're using the camera, the point and shoots, the iPhone, whatever it is you're using to capture um, with Matterport software, you do need to upload it to Matterport because that's where all the magic happens, the post-production and the processing into a really usable tour. Um, it's where a lot of the smarts are. Uh, you'll see a lot of other providers out there that the experiences will be clunky or not quite optimized. And it's because of the amazing technology that Matterport provide in that compression and optimization um, is that output. But once you have that output, you can extract the OBJ and then utilize that in different formats. Um, I can also see Bruce that you've answered some skaters questions around the Pro 2 and Theta. So thank you very much. It was around um, what happens when you are using both of them in conjunction um, and how you can optimize that. And so for reference, Bruce, um, you're saying yeah, 360s will stitch together um, with the 180 photos and you can remove the photo, is that correct? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So yeah, you can, so you, there's two questions I think from Skeeter in there. One is, so you can mix, you can, you can use multiple cameras within a single space. All you do is just disconnect from, say you're on the Pro 2, disconnect and then connect into a 360. And then uh, in that situation, I think it's, it's where you can sometimes get uh, photo alignment uh, errors when you're scanning too close to an object. Uh, the 360 cameras don't have that because you've got basically two photos only. So I think there were two questions in there that we're trying to answer in one. Yep, and nailed them both. I appreciate it. Um, this is an interesting one. Uh, Liz, we might need a little bit more information, but um, will Matterport ever have autocorrect for verticals? Are you talking about the spherical images that are sometimes on a slant? Uh, or what verticals? Oh, is this more for what we're talking about with masking potentially before? So the top of the building and the bottom and the sides, because it looked like in the image that Bruce showed that you'll be able to do verticals on that. Um, but I could be misreading this question. Uh, feel free to put some extra comments in there, Liz, if I'm getting this wrong. Uh, while we wait, there's another uh, question here for um, the notes side of things uh, for yourself, Bruce. John, uh, do we have a time frame on notes? Uh, yesterday would be good, but what, what's your opinion? <laughs> yeah. uh, tomorrow? Yeah, that'd be great. Da -da, da -da. Um, I don't, I don't, honestly, um, I got this from our uh, product team. This is, um, yeah, so th this is all in development, but it, it's coming. I think we're right now, if I'm not mistaken, there's a private beta. So that's coming I, again soon. I know soon doesn't tell you what you need. Um, I, I, that's about the best I can do right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, these, my exact timelines. Yeah. So I appreciate it. It'll probably be coming but, in months. But I guess I would take, you know, you guys who have been using Matterport for a number of years, especially in the last say, 18 months, you see the frequency in which we're releasing new capabilities. So, um, you know, there's a continuous roadmap, a continuous development stream. And, and these are the ones that are kind of at the pointy end of that, uh, of that process. 
Perfect. Um, coming back to Liz's question, so across the horizon, correct when viewing. Uh, so if your sphere is off um, when you're capturing, the sphere is going to be off um, in the end result. Matterport do do some manual, oh, sorry, automatic adjustment to bring it back into alignment, uh, but it's only to a certain extent. Um, and so I'd be, um, I guess the question is more around uneven surfaces potentially, or if your camera was off the entire tour, um, it would have a diminishing effect. Um, yeah, it's an interesting feature. Um, I guess it's something that you could bring up with um, the developers at Matterport uh, through the support channels around having a ability to kind of rotate the sphere um, in post. I know that would be pretty difficult to do, but not impossible by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and similar to the trim tools, it would be one of those things once they get enough demand for a request, it would probably be when they could look into kind of updating or providing something. But also I wouldn't be surprised if a third party provider would start um, potentially looking at something like that earlier. Um, I know that you can pull out um, panoramas, um, edit them or change them and then put them back in as well. So in that process, you could probably have a system that would assist in doing that. Uh, let me know if I did answer that question correctly, Liz. Um, hopefully I did. Um, coming towards the end, uh, David, we answered the question uh, on spaces around uh, long-term costs and things like that. So um, hopefully that does answer your question. Uh, will it ever be possible to download higher resolution panos from John? Um, Bruce, any comments on that? I don't know. Um, that's another one I'll have to go back and find out. Beautiful. Um, we'll follow up with some of the answers that we can't have answers to. Uh, whilst we've, between us, we've probably got close to 15, 20 years in this industry. Um, we never have the answers to everything. That's why we run webinars to learn more as well. Um, and so we'll be able to get back to you on some of these questions that we don't have answers to, but thank you for the question, John. I think the highest resolution you can download right now is 1080p potentially. Um, so I think that's the extent. So when we're talking about 4k sphere, capture you're capturing it in four quadrangles so it's a equal rectangular um, sphere and so it would be 180p in each quadrant to make the 4k and so that's probably why that maximum extent is currently there um but then you can use things like photoshop and lightroom to kind of touch that up but i will come back with an exact answer um for that yes highest res panels yeah so it seems to be a common occurrence uh, let us come back to you um we don't have the exact answer for you now but uh we can definitely come back to you um Oh, and Liz for the gifts as well that are generated. So your question, uh, Liz, around the um, lopsided imaging also comes down to the gifts. And so, yeah, if that panel is um, off center, then the gifts that are automatically generated will also be capturing that because they're just moving through those imageries. Um, one of the last ones here uh, from Greg, um, any plans for uploading photos after they've been taken rather than through the Matterport app? Um, so this kind of goes back to what I was saying before, uh, the smarts are in the Matterport app. And so it's really difficult to, um, or well, kind of defeats the purpose of using Matterport to be able to upload images to it. In saying that though, there's so many different cameras and devices that you can now use um, all the way down from your phone. Um, even if, you are, if you're new to Matterport, I recommend signing up. It's a free account to upload a scan that you can create from your mobile phone. It's super quick. We do them all the time uh, for testing purposes and the quality is amazing coming out of the phone uh, for testing purposes and then up through your 360 cameras. Um, it just feels like there's a whole suite of them and continually um, expanding it. Uh, Amy, Bruce, the one of you guys want to list the uh, cameras that are available in the 360 range and then obviously the Pro 2. Sure, I can take that one. Insta360, 1X, one X, one X2, one X2, R, and the Ricoh Theta V, the Ricoh Theta Z1, and the Ricoh Theta SC2. If you are, by the way, going to use a iPhone uh, to scan, I would highly recommend, as I show you with my prop, uh, put it on a tripod. Uh, you get so much better quality output. Um, the, the human mistake of scanning this way does uh, where you need to keep the camera still and rotate your body around the camera, not you, not the camera around your body. Um, so if you can get access to a cheap tripod, that's the way to go if you're going to play around with that. Perfect. I think we have got to the long run of questions, which is great. Um, I really appreciate everyone's participation um, and for everyone sticking around. I know that you're all very busy. Some of these questions, well, all of these questions were amazing. Um, put us on our 
feet. Um, and as you can see, we don't have answers to everything, which is a really good sign as well, um, because it means that there's space to grow and learn. Uh, the last one here, David, around the scaling for long-term spaces. Uh, we answered that with the original question on other business model or potentially having your customers set up accounts. Um, but it seems like it's a common topic as well. So maybe something that we can discuss in future um, webinars where we're focusing more on business models and operations um, in the near future as well. Uh, we will continue to... Uh, Bruce, go for it. I was just going to say, can I add one thing very quickly on the large spaces? Um, the other option is to use the deep matter links, uh, take a matter tag, link it to a, an exact scan pot spot in the new, in the next um, space. So from a virtual walkthrough, you, do, you have basically an uninterrupted move from one to the next. Perfect. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, Skida, mahalo. Thank you very much for joining us. For everyone, uh, really appreciate your time uh, this afternoon. We will be following up again uh, with the webinar in the next 24 hours. If you want to um, re-listen to anything that's been provided here, uh, we'll endeavor to get back to any of the questions that we couldn't answer as well. Feel free to email us at info at scanned, scan 3 dcomau with any of your questions um, and we'll endeavor to get back to you with the correct answers. Uh, we'll also be following up with the EDM outlining the opportunity for the next 24 hour snap sale, uh, $1,000 off the camera this is in Australian dollars, a hard case and a tripod uh, for the first 10 people participating. So get in quick. Um, again, I'd like to thank Amy uh, for your amazing insights. Thank you very much for joining us. Bruce, as always, great to have you. Looking forward to the next session that we run. Uh, for all of you panelists, um, sorry, uh, attendees, if there are any topics that you'd like us to cover in the future, we'd like to make these more regular, please let us know. Um, and we'll try and uh, curate a webinar and bring in the experts from that space as well. And in the future, it would be nice to have a few of you present on potentially what you're doing in this space as well. Um, we'd love to hear from you. So thank you again for all of your time. Uh, Amy, uh, Bruce, thank you. And we'll speak to you all soon.